DC Circle, the classroom show. My name is Zerk Sasantya and I'm a partner at Vadya Gandhi. I'm here today to talk to you about valuation. Now the first thing that we need to answer is what exactly is valuation? Valuation is a method of determining the worth of something. Now this could be a share in a company, a right that you have, or even part of a company that you want to transfer out. So the question is, why do I need to determine valuation of anything? Well, the simple thing is, without knowing valuation, you would not be able to offer the shares of your company for sale to a third party, because until that uh, exercise is done, you won't know the pricing. Similarly, if you take a concept of estate planning, Indian promoters, for example, typically hold huge amount of shares in the companies that they start up. Now, when it comes to passing the benefit of these shares on to their family members, if you do a valuation, you are able to prevent later acrimonious disputes because everyone would have received a fair share. Uh, we would also need to uh, look at valuation when doing assessments of different parts of a company. For example, if I wanted to divest an undertaking of a company, I would need to know what does that va uh, undertaking actually represent in terms of value. Finally, and last but not least, we should be looking at valuation in case of litigation. For example, if the valuation of an enterprise is actually very low, it may not be worth my while to actually litigate. Now we've talked about why we should do valuation, let's talk a little bit about the difference between valuation and price. Now what is the difference between valuation and price? Aren't they the same thing? They're not. Price is a function of what a person is willing to pay and may be dependent on factors otherwise then due to the intrinsic worth of an item. I'll give you an example of this. Recently in the Coal India IPO, Coal India priced their shares at 245 rupees. The shares however listed at almost 288 rupees and in fact closed on the first day of trading at 342 rupees and 35 paise which is a substantial difference between the list price as you can see this 342 rupees may not have been reflective of the valuation that was actually reached or it may have been reflective of the valuation that investors felt that the company was actually worth you could have also problems of undervaluation. An example of this was recently, Shell India made a preferential allotment of shares to its parent. Now the preferential allotment was made at par. However, the income tax authorities raised an objection, saying that how could you issue the shares at par? The shares should have been valued at more than that, and hence the price that should have been paid was far higher. So now let's talk about some of the different methods that you could actually use for valuation. The very first one which I'm sure everyone has heard about is the net asset value. Now for that what you do is you look at the book value of assets for instance as for the last audited financials or what you do is you look at the intrinsic value of assets and what you do is you peg that with the market value of the assets just now or the replacement costs of the, value of the assets in question. The next method that, we, uh, that people actually use is the earning capitalization method. Now, pursuant to this method, what you do is you estimate the future earnings of an enterprise based on its current situation. The valuer then applies a, whatever discount that he seems fit and then projects it forward to arrive at what should be the earnings going forward in the company in question. Now, what is important to note that when you're using this kind of method, things like, for example, one-time subsidies or one-off transactions may or may not get factored within this method. A third method of valuation that is used nowadays is the comparable transaction method. To do that, what you do is you look at the sector in which the company is operating in, for example, see are there any comparable entities out there. If there are, then what is the price at which those entities are pitching their shares or what is the value that they have reached when it comes to their uh, company and net worth. However, again, the disadvantage of this problem, of this method is 
It requires comparable transactions to be out there. You may be operating in an industry where the companies generally don't change hands and therefore you cannot benchmark it against some uh, comparable transaction. The next method of valuation that we'll talk about is the market price method. Now, this is a valuation method mostly used for listed companies. And what it presumes is the value of the company, is the price of the listed company shares as this is the value that the investors perceive of the company. However, what needs to be considered is the equity market is sometimes influenced by external factors. Sometimes a company's net worth or value may actually be based on information not available to investors and they may make a slight error in judgment call. I'd like to now talk about the discounted cash flow method of valuation. This is a method in which the valuer takes into account not just the past profits of a company, but the future profitability of the company. And what the valuer does is that he estimates the free cash flows of the company for a predefined period that would be available to distribution to the stakeholders of the company, such as owners and creditors. So I've tried to basically describe valuation, the importance of doing a valuation, as well as some of the more common methods of valuation that are being used today. In my next episode, I'd like to take a little bit of a deeper look in the discounted cash flow method of valuation, as well as generally talk about how changes in valuation can impact a company. This is Alexis Antia, and I'll see you next time.